Okay, today we're going to go through the parting of the Red Sea. So we're leaving Genesis now. Now we're in book number two, Exodus. There's a lot of stories in Exodus, but we're going to look at one today in particular, which is the parting the Red Sea. This is when the Israelites went through the water on dry land. You can see Moses here. So that's who we're introduced to in Exodus. Who is this? What's his name? I just said it. Mateo. Moses, Simon, what's one of the rules? Thank you. So this is Moses. Ah, so who's talking to Moses? God's talking to Moses and telling him to go and speak to Pharaoh to let the people go because they were in bondage in Egypt. But Pharaoh wouldn't, would he? His heart was hardened. His heart, his heart was hardened. His heart wasn't hardened. His heart was hardened. So he didn't want to let the people go. And do you know what happened in Egypt? The ten plagues happened in Egypt. Do you know what the different plagues were in Egypt? What's the first one? Water turns to blood. So when Moses went in, hey girls, come and take a seat. So when Moses went into Egypt, and Pharaoh didn't want to let the Israelites go out of bondage, God judged Egypt with ten plagues. So he turned the water into blood. Can you imagine that? If you turn the tap on and instead of water coming out, blood came out. Isn't that yucky? Water turned to blood. And the second one was when he just infested the land with frogs. Frogs was everywhere. Imagine trying to go to sleep and you had just frogs all around your bed. and ew, Yucky, slimy frogs. Frogs number three was gnats or lice. Oh, can you imagine having gnats and lice all through your body? It's like itchy, scratchy. Oh, so he plagued the land with gnats or lice. Number four, fourth plague. They went into Egypt. It's just swarms of flies corrupted the land all through. Have you ever had a lot of flies in the house? You maybe have only like 10 or 20 flies flying around. When you have swarms of flies coming, sometimes it just be dark, black, big swarm of flies. Well, that was coming into Egypt. Number five, so if all these plagues were happening, Pharaoh still wasn't letting the people go. Number five is he put disease on all the livestock and killed all the cattle in Egypt. That would have cost them a lot of money. And it's getting worse. Look at number six. What's this one? Number six plague. Because he sent boils. You know what a boil is? Anyone know what a boil is? Anyone ever had a blister? Who's had a blister before? I know, I've had a blister. There you guys. Come take a seat, Atticus. Well, a boil, guess what a boil is? A boil is a blister, but it's like really big. A lot of pus in there. Sent boils on the people. That's number six. Number seven, it was getting so bad, God sent hail from heaven. But this wasn't regular hail, this was fire coming down and it destroyed a lot of the land of Egypt. And it was at this point where even, even Pharaoh's people were saying, Pharaoh, why don't you just let the people go? Can't you see that Egypt is being destroyed? I think by this point, people were getting a bit sick of all the plagues. Now their house is getting destroyed. But no, Pharaoh didn't stop there. At number seven, you have number eight, locusts in the land, devouring all the food, all the crop, and everything like that. Simon, you can ask something afterwards. And then darkness was the ninth plague. Right, so what was this one? This was when it was so dark, just couldn't see anything. God actually sent supernatural darkness over the land. And then number 10, who knows the last one? You know the last one, Simon? No. No? I, I do know the last one, but I was trying to tell you what hmm? in darkness is called a total eclipse. Total eclipse. Yeah, well, this one was a little bit different because it's not an eclipse of the sun. This was God actually sending a supernatural darkness throughout the land, even during the day. So it's not when the moon blocks the sun. This was a different type of darkness. And then number 10 if you remember the Passover, when they put the blood on the doorposts, God sent the angel of death 
into the camp. And anyone that didn't have the blood on the doorpost, their firstborn child died. And it was at that point when Pharaoh decided to let the people go. But what was interesting is even after they let the people go, he still hardened his heart. And then he said to them, why have we let the people from serving us? So even after all the ten plagues, Pharaoh's heart was still so hard that after he even let the people go, he changed his mind again. And he said, why didn't we let them go? And then he followed them. The Israelites, when they left Egypt, he said, go and chase them down and get them to come back. So they got into their horses and their chariots and they followed the Israelites out of the land. So here's the Israelites here. They got down. This is the water. And you have the Egyptians chasing them in their chariots and in their horses. And when they got down to the water, you know what happened? They got down to the water and on this side they had mountains and they had nowhere to go because here the Egyptians had closed them in. Where are they going to go? So they called out to the Lord to be saved. And some of them were praying, but you know what others were doing? Others were complaining weren't they? They didn't trust in the Lord. They were saying to Moses, Moses, did you just bring us out here into this wilderness to die? So Moses said to them, you will see the salvation of God. And then God spoke to Moses and said, tell the people to keep walking forward. They must be thinking, walking forward, where should we go? Because we've got the mountains on one side, we've got the sea on the other, and then we've got the Egyptians on the other side. We're all enclosed in. So what God did, the angel that was leading the camp went to the back of the camp, the group of people, to protect them. Same with the, cloud, the cloudy pillar that was following them. So the cloudy pillar blocked out the sun. So for the Egyptians, it was darkness, it was nighttime. But for the Israelites, it was still daytime. And then he told Moses to reach out your hand over the sea. And what happened? The sea parted and separated. So God separated the sea. And the Bible even tells us that when the Israelites went through the sea, they went through on dry land. Can you imagine? You know, sometimes when you put water onto the garden, and even when it's dried up, it's still all wet, squishy. But when God separated and parted the sea, when they walked through, they walked through on dry land all the way through. Now the Egyptians looking at this, what do you think they did? What do you think the Egyptians did? Well, they tried to follow them through the sea, didn't they? So they went, charge through the sea to try and catch them after the angel of the Lord and the cloudy pillar went out of the way. But what do you think happened when they tried to follow them through the sea? What do you think, Zephi? That's right. Do you think God was going to let his enemies get to his people? No. And their chariots started to get stuck in the mud as the water started to come back and they couldn't get out. And God told Moses to reach, stretch your rod back over the sea. And what happened? The sea came back down on the Egyptians and drowned them all. Okay, and this is how God protected his people. See how God, the, the enemies of God's people tried to attack them? And God wrought a great salvation uh, when they left Egypt. And this is all the people looking at all the chariots and looking at all the Egyptians wash up on the seashore and they realized God had protected them. And this is Exodus 14, 31. So Exodus is the story mainly about Moses and what Moses led the people of Israel. It said, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, look at this, and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So that was the story of the parting of the Red Sea. After the plagues, they came out 
And then Moses stretched forth the rod and parted the sea that let the Israelites go through. And then God made the sea come back down on the Israelites. So this is a picture of salvation to us as well, isn't it? Right, so just like God protected the people of Israel from his enemies, from the wrath going through the sea, if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, this is how we can be saved from God's wrath as well. We can come out on the other side dry and, and safe, can't we? So today we've got a craft that Katarina's put together for us to teach us more or help us to remember the story of the parting of the Red Sea. You want me to show you? Look at this. You see it on the back there? What do you think that is? You see it? What do you think it is, Effie? Let's see it. It's Moses. Look at this. Oh, Simon's already seen it. He knows the answer. So what have we got here? We got the sea on either side, the dry land going in the middle. And look at this. And they walk through on dry land. Yay! The salvation of the Lord. You guys like that one? All right, let's go to the back and we can make it together.